lots of messages as uh, as you would imagine david i'm not saying i believe or disbelieve russell brown but you talk about the women not going to the police but they may feel ashamed which Indeed. i completely understand and that was the point that i i was trying to make earlier as well um support from musk and tate speaks volumes the allegations highlight the management style in the media that's from mick uh, also, this says, uh, regardless of the fact that I do not like Russell Brand, any accusations of a criminal nature should not be published until they're formally reported to and investigated by the relevant authority. This will ensure that if any subsequent criminal court action follows, the suspect can and will get a fair trial. One more. Uh, Ellie says... No matter what a court outcome, the damage is now done. Even if he's found innocent, they have successfully ruined him and silenced him. Let's get more on this now. Joining us now is Mark Stevens, who's a media lawyer. Good morning to you. Good morning, David. Oh, we've, been, we've been treading carefully this morning. These are allegations. He's innocent until, until proven guilty. Uh, that message from, from Ellie, I, I think, is really pertinent as well. This is all over the newspapers. It's the front page of every single newspaper. Clearly, there are two sides to this story. The Sunday Times will have had enormous legal advice about what they can and cannot publish. Of course, Russell Brand has taken legal advice. He decided to release that video as well. What's your take on this? Well, I think that uh, what we've got here are surprisingly detailed accounts um, of the uh, women that have both been published in the Sunday Times and uh, it, it, on dispatches last night. And it, it does stand in quite stark contrast to some of the more generalized claims that we've seen more recently. Uh, as a consequence of that, I think that it's almost uh, a racing certainty that the police will have to investigate these allegations. Uh, and I think we're sort of coming to a divide in the road. So on the one hand, uh, there'll be, I think, a police investigation. On the other hand, I think there's going to be some very severe scrutiny and perhaps criticism of the way in which uh, not just broadcasters, but uh, managers, agents, film companies uh, and, all, uh, and the like handled complaints because the gravamen of some of these is that they were reported contemporaneously but not actually actioned on. And I think that is something that needs to be looked at because it's important both for the person about whom the complaints are made, but also the person who is making the complaint, that these things are fresh in the mind. The best evidence is obviously proximate to the time. And so as a consequence of that, uh, it would have been preferable to have these investigated at the time. And I think there's going to be some scrutiny as to why that didn't happen. Just, just in terms of that, and, and the industry has been known in the past to turn a blind eye, and I think that's what mm. you're alluding to here. Also, just in terms of this, Brand has been applauded across the years about his jokes. He's made it very much a part of his identity, the fact that... And he went on to say how he manipulated women for sex. He was skillful uh, in the art of being a womanizer. That's what the audience uh, grew to know about him. That in itself, is that prejudicial in this case? No, I think that is uh, who the man is. And, you know, people may have views about whether or not uh, what two consenting adults do together is right for them or not, but two consenting adults are consenting and the law doesn't get in the way. Where the law intervenes mm. is when things are crossing the boundary and it's non-consensual. And I think Russell Brand in his... Uh, sort of preemptive denial yesterday, his denial video made it clear that he's only behaved in a consensual way. Now, that would have been very triggering were there to be any women out there who felt that what they had done with Russell Brand was non-consensual. And so in these circumstances, we very often see uh, a sort of uh, a flood of cases of Me Too type cases coming out um, and people are emboldened to make those allegations. Uh, if they don't happen, and that's happened uh, in a number of cases recently where no other people have come forward, then obviously that casts doubt on the uh, people making the complaints in the first place. So I think this is uh, a sort of watershed moment 
uh, and it'll be interesting to see what the next few days hold, uh, both in terms of uh, if there are any other complainants come forward and also in relation to uh, the police investigations and how that proceeds. There are also a lot of allegations about his behaviour on set. There are claims that uh, mm. this particular a member of staff had to collect Brown from a hotel room. He appeared in his underwear, I'm, I'm quoting this from the article, and suggested having a quickie in terms of uh, there are allegations about what he did and the fact that he exposed himself to this, uh, to this young lady. Um, she also goes on to say uh, he told her he had it written into his contract that he wasn't allowed to have any sexual contact with anyone working on that program. There are a lot of rumours flying around about this was an open secret within the industry about his profligate uh, behaviour and of course again that, that shines a very dim light on, on the media industry if those aren't indeed true. Well that's absolutely right and again I think one of the challenges here is to Discri discriminate between consensual activity between two consenting adults and that which crosses the line. And I think there is, uh, so in, in terms of the sexual misbehaviors that are alleged, but there is another issue that we have to remember that this is a workplace. And, you know, how many of us would expect to see our employer sitting there reclining in their white underpants? And I think that is something which uh, is troubling. It was clearly normalised uh, for his manager assistant who didn't know any better. And it's interesting, actually, that in Harvey Weinstein's case, he behaved in very similar ways to his assistants as well. Uh, not to draw a comparison with the cases, but just that particular uh, fact. And so I think we have moved on a bit since those uh, days where I think uh, if an assistant walked in and found uh, a bit of talent on the on the bed uh, in, in, in a state of deja vu, they would actually report that to mm. the workplace. And I don't think that that would be condoned anymore. So we have moved, but I don't know that we've moved far enough. No, no, indeed. And of course, these took place between 2006 and 2013. Yeah. Now, according to insiders at the BBC, and, and as you rightly say, of things have indeed moved on. Complaints were made about Brown's behaviour, allegedly, in the studios to Leslie Douglas, the BBC's controller for Radio 2 and 6 Music. Uh, appears nothing was done as a result. Also, these allegations are that Russell Brand uh, displayed alarming displays of aggression and disrespect, hurling objects across the studio in fits of rage and urinating in a bottle in full view of everyone. Let me just ask you another question. Obviously, he and Jonathan Ross with Andrew Sachs uh, and, and what happened there, is that obviously sets the sort of background music for this, I think, and the way that people will then view this uh, incident. But how much of that is prejudicial? Well, I think it's, uh, it shows uh, an exotic behaviour. But, um, I mean, aside from outraging public decency or making an indecent display of himself, there's nothing uh, per se illegal about that. It was obviously in breach of employment law, but it's not a criminal offence. And so I think there's, uh, it's important to make sure that these things are uh, kept in proper perspective. Uh, we may decry the behaviours of somebody as being despicable, but the question is, are they illegal? Now, I think we should be rightly focusing on those things and not ignoring the rest of it, but focusing on the allegations of illegality that were made clearly and plainly in the uh, programme on dispatches and in the Sunday Times. And they are detailed and they warrant a detailed rebuttal and a detailed investigation. And I think that is where we're going. And of course, the women are not uh, powerless in this particular instance because they do have some legal armory. So uh, Brand has said that everything he did with any woman has always been uh, consensual. So if any of the women believe that it was not consensual, as is clear from the reporting, then he has called them a liar and that is defamatory and he can sue for de defamation. And in one case, in, in, at least, uh, Alice, uh, there may be um, a personal injury type claim to be made as well. But of course, if the police are going to investigate, they have to go first, and any of those kinds of claims can take uh, can take uh, second place. But I think that this story has a way to run, both in terms of Russell Brand, but also in accountability for the media and why things weren't done earlier. Um, because I think we all know within the media industry that 
uh, his behaviours were certainly seen as suboptimal at the time. And the question is, did anyone know that they were criminal? And in terms of this, Russell Brown's reputation, these are allegations, of course. He he yeah. released that statement yesterday. What makes the police decide whether to investigate? Are you saying that this is about the women involved have to make an official complaint? Is that the only way that the police would investigate? Or would it be the public outcry at what's going on? No, it's uh, the police can start an investigation when they're aware of it. I note that... Uh, Scotland Yard made a statement yesterday that they were aware of them and I think they're considering what to do. Uh, so in those circumstances, I think uh, the jury's out as far as the police are concerned. It's not the case that uh, individuals, uh, survivors of abuse in, in any case, have to uh, make a complaint. Third parties can make complaints uh, because it is considered to be in the public interest for criminal behaviour or alleged criminal behaviour to be investigated just as a general proposition. So it doesn't need that. And of course, this is a role, a vital sort of gatekeeper role, which can be uh, run by film companies and television companies and such like, because if they become aware of material which is inappropriate, they can report it to the police themselves. And very often in employment cases, they do so. Mm. Uh, really good to talk to you. I agree totally. I think this story has uh, some way to run. Mark, very good to talk to you indeed. That's Mark Stevens, uh, media lawyer.